Welcome to the lab, everyone. Today, I'm going to take you into the minds of some of my students, which can be quite the interesting place to be because during our male and female reproductive lectures, I tell my students that they can pretty much ask me anything about human reproduction. So as you can imagine, I get asked all sorts of what we'll call thought-provoking questions. One that I've actually been asked multiple times before is, can you really break the penis? And if so, what happens? Well, you can most definitely break a penis and this is actually called a penile fracture, but it may not be exactly what you think. So today, we'll talk about the relevant anatomy and how it relates to a penile fracture, how this fracturing occurs and also fractures one's heart and soul, the symptoms someone experiences, and of great importance, can you even treat and fix a penile fracture? Or is someone's reproductive existence just doomed? And we should probably also talk about preventing a penile fracture in the first place. It's going to be an awesome one. So, let's do this. So let's talk about the anatomy of the penis so we can more fully understand a penile fracture. Contrary to one of the slang terms used for an erect penis, there are no bones in the penis. And so a penile fracture is not like a typical bone fracture. So then, what actually breaks? Well, if you take a look at the inside of the penis, which I'm about to show you a cross section through a real penis, you'll see there are two erectile tissue bodies called the corpora cavernosa, located on the dorsal surface, or what you might think of as the top of the penis. These fill with blood during an erection, and the exact details of how that occurs is covered in our erection video that we've already done, so I'll link that at the end. There's also a more spongy, less vascular, cylindrical erectile tissue mass on the ventral or underside of the penis called the corpus spongiosum. And this contains the urethra, which is a passageway for urine and seminal fluid. And keep the urethra in mind as we learn more about penile fractures. But there's one other very important structure or tissue that we need to make note of. And that is this white looking connective tissue that is surrounding the erectile tissue masses. And this is called the tunica albuginea. Now when the penis is not erect, or in other words flaccid, the tunica albuginea has no tension on it. You could kind of think of it as bunched up, and that's partly why a flaccid penis can move and bend in all sorts of different directions without any pain. But when blood starts to fill those erectile tissues and the penis starts to expand, eventually the tunica albuginea will stretch and get tight and stop any further expansion of the penis. And this is what provides the structural support and maintains the shape of the erect penis. So now that we know the relevant anatomy, how does a penile fracture actually occur? Well, in a way, it's kind of an aiming issue. You miss the target you were going for and hit an immovable object. Or in other words, you hit another part of the body that was not meant to receive the penis. And typically this occurs during vigorous sexual activity because there has to be some level of vigorous force and or velocity to damage the penis. Or it could possibly happen with some other blunt force trauma to the erect penis. And there are even some cultures where they will forcefully bend the penis in order to make an erection go away. But essentially, a penile fracture occurs with sudden and forceful bending of an erect penis. And what this does is tears or ruptures the tunica albuginea. So what are the signs and symptoms of a penile fracture? Well, many of the signs and symptoms are immediate and unmistakable. People may hear a popping or a cracking sound combined with sudden and severe pain. This is accompanied with a rapid loss of the erection with swelling and bruising of the penis as well as a deformity and abnormal bending of the penis. Now, if this occurs or one suspects a penile fracture, you would want to seek immediate medical attention because delaying treatment could lead to complications such as erectile dysfunction, permanent abnormal penile curvature, and continued pain during erections. Treatment for a penile fracture is almost always surgical, which involves making an incision to access the tear in the tunica albuginea in order to repair it, as well as possibly repair the urethra, as some penile fractures can also damage the urethra. So repairing that so urine and seminal fluid can flow properly is obviously quite important. Now there may be some people who wonder if good old fashioned rest, ice, and anti-inflammatory medications could be used as a treatment option rather than surgery, because who wouldn't love to avoid surgical incisions in their penis? And there have been cases where penile fractures have been treated non-surgically, but the non-surgical approach is much less preferred due to the higher risk of complications and less favorable long-term outcomes. Because with surgery, most males can return to normal activity, 
including sexual activity after a full recovery. Now, earlier I mentioned we would also talk about preventing penile fractures. And you might think that sounds a little funny because no one really tries to get a penile fracture. It's an accident of passion. And while it's obviously not always possible to prevent accidents, here are some tips from the Institute of Human Anatomy to help minimize your risk of fracturing a penis. One, be mindful during sexual activity, especially with vigorous movements or unusually angled or acrobatic positions. Two, communication is key, people. Communicate with your partner if something feels a little off, awkward, or starts to hurt. You don't have to act all stoic and tough because after all, the integrity of your tunica albuginea is on the line here. Also, if you are participating in a solo act here, listen to yourself. If it hurts, back off a little bit. Three, avoid situations where the erect penis might be accidentally bent or struck. I guess a specific example of this would be to avoid playing sports with an erection. Four, if you recall, I mentioned that some cultures will quickly bend the penis in order to quickly reduce an erection. Now, I truly am not trying to be culturally insensitive at all here, but if there is another way to potentially reduce the erection rather than quickly reduce the penis, we could maybe explore those options. And I'm not implying masturbation here, as some cultures and religions try to avoid masturbation, but maybe something like going for a quick run or doing some push-ups or some quick jumping jacks to direct blood flow elsewhere, because those are some quick possible options when a cold shower or a cold plunge isn't readily available. Oh my gosh! And as always, thank you for watching today's video. Hopefully you learned some cool information about penile fractures. And luckily these penile fractures are relatively uncommon. But if you wanna learn more information about say like a male erection, we'll link that here. And again, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Leave some comments below and I'll see you in the next video.